UK Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Arnold Palmer Invitational is about to begin. Delighted to have 2002 PGA Championship winner Rich Beam in the booth. I'm Luke Elvey and it's a good morning to Henny Koyak who's out on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, what a gorgeous day as this event kicks off our featured group. Well, we've got two players who appear to have entered into quite the rivalry. Yeah, so this week their goal is to beat John Rahm. Henny, that is by no means an easy feat. Uh, no, I, if John Rahm is fired up, sparks could fly, you want to be out of the way, and he's just going to go straight through like a Spanish ball. <laughs> yes, he, he's fire and brimstone, isn't he, John Rahm? All the Americans couldn't beat him in a Ryder Cup. This player, well, it's an ambitious rivalry to say the least. She played that nicely. Going with the five iron here. Come on, get down. And here we are with the third shot. This is a good opportunity for her to make a par. Ooh, right by the hole. So it'll be a bogey on the scorecard to begin the round. Not what they're looking for. A little nervy out there so far. She's currently tied for third. The second hole is a long par three, old typical Redan style at 230 yards. Yes, the green runs from right to left and chases away from the player on the tee. You can hit it short right and have it bounce on to the flag six that are on the right. However, when they're in the back left, you don't want to come up short and left in a low area. That'll leave a very difficult up and down. Oh, that's a beauty. Great shot from the bunker. Let's return to live play now. Didn't quite get the approach close enough, so a long putt in front of them. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. This putt of about seven feet to the hole. Nice little putt to hole, that one. Nicely played. Moving on up the leaderboard now after that hole. Rich, the first exposure to the famous lake here at Arnold Palmer's Bay Hill Club and Lodge is the third. There's a lot of intimidating tee shots on this golf course, Luke. This could be number one. Water down the left-hand side you obviously want no part of, but if you miss it right in the rough, that is very gnarly and nasty to come out of. The green works away from the player moving from right to left. The miss is out to the right, but watch out. It's awfully quick coming down that green. Don't chip it or putt it in the water. She didn't hit her best shot there. I'm pretty sure of that. Do you like the view from where you're standing, Henny? Setting up here from about 140 yards. Chosen the pitching wedge here. She won't be too disappointed with that. Certainly a couple of putts from there. And that'll be a good hole. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? Setting up this putt 26 feet from the cup. That'll sting a bit. It's just about three feet away. A little slide happening here on the leaderboard. See if he can bounce back. The first of the par fives, Rich, the fourth hole. Yes, Luke, you got out of bounds on the right-hand side. That shouldn't come into play for the players, but those bunkers down the left-hand side certainly will. If you get a good tee shot away and you find the fairway, the second shot uphill to this par five, you can reach, but still lots of trouble lurking around this green. 
This one is heading towards the nasty stuff. This lie is not great. And here we are with their four. Five shots off the lead. <laughs> That's almost a gimme. Great chip. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. Let's catch up with John Rahm. Gee, that'll keep the momentum rolling, Rich. Well, when your rival plays golf every single second of the day and eats birdies for breakfast, lunch and dinner, this is what you get. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. The fifth at Bay Hill is the shortest par four on the front nine, measuring just under 400 yards, Rich. Placement off the tee, critical here. It is. It plays straight downhill the entire way, so most players not taking driver out and challenging those bunkers. Lay up short of those, and you'll have a short shot to a green that once again chases away from you at the back end of it. That's a shame. Had a chance to hit the green, but couldn't quite get there. Greens and regulation today has been absolutely abysmal, and that is reflective on their scorecard. Hmm. Well, that shot took some serious skill. And this part to move into second spot on the leaderboard, or at least a share of it. I tell you what, there's been some great golf being played all over the course. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that's the shot. Go ahead and make one. Don't worry about getting it up and down. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. Our current leader is enjoying a two-stroke lead. Now we head to the famous par 5 sixth rich. A lot of players are thinking birdie, maybe even eagle. Out to the right, most definitely the widest part of the fairway, just left of the left-hand bunker out there. We'll leave a layup out to the right, and then you just have a short pitch on from there. This is a really solid birdie opportunity. Rich, I love being back at Bay Hill every time because you get to honor the absolute legend of our game, the King Arnold Palmer. There's just an air of something extra special this week, isn't there? When you step on the property here at Bay Hill, you know you're in the presence of something special. Arnold Palmer's legacy was really built here, wasn't it? Granted, he absolutely brought everything he had to the PJ Tour, but when you come to Bay Hill and you have all the monuments, especially the statue right there to the right behind number one and number 10 tee boxes, you just get a chill down your spine like, Man, this is some kind of awesome place. I cannot wait to tee it up here. And saying that, Mr. Palmer did not <laughs> leave a knock off course. That's very easy for these players. But listen, they come back here every year knowing that they need and they want to honor the gentleman who helped form the legacy of the PGA Tour. And that's why they're out here playing for all the money. Trailing by a stroke after that hole. Let's have a look at the seventh hole, a par three. Finally, you have a green that pitches back towards you ever so slightly, Luke, but still coming into it with a good six, five iron from 195 yards, it's still a difficult task to get it close. We'll now move over to John Rahm. He's two strokes behind his rival this week. Oh, terrific, what an effort. Saving one there after being all over the parking lot, chipping in for the par. A chance to move into first place on the leaderboard. That's too bad. 
Just three feet to go to the hole. Don't miss this. They can be costly. This for par. Sitting at three over for the day. And after that good play, moving up the leaderboard. The par four eight, Rich, a challenging tee shot and approach. Love this tee shot here, Luke. The fairway camber is pretty good from right to left, kicking the golf ball towards that bunker. So make sure to take one less club off this tee. From there, you make sure that you take enough club for your second shot to carry the front edge. If not, that golf ball will come falling back off the green into the drink. Good chance for a birdie coming up. She's hit it inside the range. This putt coming up is for birdie. Oh, just missed. In she goes. Let's head to the next. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. Let's take a look at the final hole on the front nine, the ninth, and what a tough tee shot it is. It is it ever. Players want to avoid the bunker down the left-hand side, so inevitably they push it out to the right-hand side, into the rough, into the trees. Now they've got really very little chance of reaching the green in two. So this is probably the most difficult tee shot on this front nine and one they have to find the fairway with. Wonderfully played. Looks to be going with a hybrid here. Fingers crossed for a good kick to the left. She's found the green on this approach. And this putt is for birdie three on the scorecard. Get the fist pump ready. This looks like it's going in. And that should secure the par on this one. Let's go to John Rahm. He's going to want to improve on that current fifth spot. Here's John Rahm. That's always an impressive looking ball flight, isn't it, the draw? Yep, solid connection. This is looking good. A oh, lovely looking shot into birdie range here at the ninth. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. Oh, this is a precarious position, if you don't mind me saying, Rich. They have the lead, but there's plenty chasing with just nine to play. Yeah, but I, I like the position. I like being out in front. That forces the other players to come catch you. I like their position. Uh, it's heading to the rough for mine. And Henny, what kind of a shot are they facing this time? Setting up here from about 155. Yeah, that one will play. Scorecard filled with threes never hurts. Good putt to make this. Ooh. She's got a par putt here. Let's see if she can make it. You've finished your work on that hole. Let's take a look at the next one. We'll now move over to John Rahm. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Yeah, magical shot out of the bunker, that one. It's time to check on the leaderboard. Our current leader is up by three shots. The par for 11th resembles the par for third, doesn't it? The big lake on the left-hand side. It does. It just has a little more landing room here on the left-hand side, however. But if you lay back, be prepared to go in with a long iron. If you take the driver out and successful, you now turn this challenging hole into almost a birdie opportunity. Oh, absolutely flushed. Steps up to a punt of about 15 feet in distance.
Ouch, that hurts. An opportunity to make a par here. Leading by five shots after that. And the 12th hole, Rich, similar to the 4th hole. Arnold Palmer has really started to mimic front and back nines. He does. It's kind of the same thing. Out of bounds, out to the right. you got to avoid both those bunkers there, both right and left. You find the fairway. Again, second shot slightly uphill to a green that sits above you. One of the big dangers here, though, is going long. That is a big no-no to miss it long on this 12th. Getting ready to play their third. Well, I'm sure she'll take that one. And Henny, what are they looking at here? Careful not to leave this one short. It's back uphill and nothing worse than leaving an uphill putt short. It was on a good line. And this one is for her par. From the sand, looking to get up and down. Oh, stop it! What a way to make your par. Oh, that was a tasty little morsel, wasn't it? Our leader is out in front by a whopping five strokes. Number 13, not a long hole by anyone's stretch, but the pond in front of the green really plays havoc. It does, more so than it should. It's just a long iron or a hybrid off the tee. Find the fairway down the right-hand side, open up the angle for your second shot, and it's obvious you just don't want to miss your second shot right. So bail out to the left-hand side, make a par. Pretty simple. Good sounding strike, that one. Yeah, that was a safe play. Thirteen feet to the hole. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. That was a gallant attempt. Puddle drop. Well done. And just keeping it in neutral on the leaderboard. And another of the uphill par threes, the 14th, Rich. This is such a difficult hole because it, this tee shot lines you up over on the left-hand side where you'll find those bunkers. But if you bail out to the right, well, now you're running into a low area that you have a pretty difficult chip shot to a green that historically is the firmest and fastest on this golf course. Let's go to our man, John, on the ground. There's something brewing down there. Let's find out what it is. Hey, guys, we're checking in down here with Brooke Henderson as she gets set here for her next shot on the 16th. Yes! What a play from the rough. Was hoping to get on the green and does one better. Ooh, that almost went down. This is a par putt, and that puts her in first place. As we get into the closing stretch here at Bay Hill, the 15th, the par four. Strong par four, your dog legs from left to right. Don't miss it out to the right in that bunker. Not only are you hitting your second shot out of the trap, but also you've got some magnolia trees to deal with. This is a very difficult fairway to find because that fairway does chase away from you just over that bunker. This is a very strong par four. And now we head to the 17th, and this happened just a moment ago. Lining up for his third now.
That's too bad. Put a great effort on that stroke. And back to the play, shall we? Three over for the day. Currently in the lead. This one heading to the bunker. Didn't quite have the right stuff there. Oh, no one likes a plug lie. Really, just getting it out of the bunker is a big deal here. Can she make her par on this one? Oh, so close. Putting for bogey here. And still in top spot after that hole. Keep it going. Three holes remaining. This is what it's all about. Time to see who is going to get it done. Well, one of the great parts of the finish here of Bay Hills Club and Lodge, Rich, is the fluctuations in scoring, and it all starts here at the par 5 16th. Luke, you got to take advantage of this par 5. It's just over 500 yards. Find the fairway. Don't flirt with either of those bunkers out there. Second shot should be with a middle to long iron to a green that's surrounded by water on the left and bunkers on the right. But still, it's a great opportunity to make four or better. Well played, mate. Rich, good chance to get at this green in two. Yes, this player's found the fairway, and now they've got the opportunity to knock this on in two. Be wary of coming up short and left, obviously, in the water, but don't be anxious to miss it out to the right, especially in that bunker that's over in the middle of the green on the right-hand side. That really can wreak havoc with the players. Try and find the green at all costs with this second shot. Seven feet to the cup. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? Terrific shot, almost an eagle. Always nice when you can just go ahead and tap one in for birdie. Currently at plus three for the round. Two holes to go, Luke. I know who I like. The par 317th Rich has got a wonderful atmosphere around it. Looks visually quite stunning, but my word, it's a brute. This hole causes more stress for the players, I think, than any other hole in the golf course, with possibly the exception of number three. This green is nearly impossible to find as it is so firm historically through the years. You find the green, you make your three, and you're smiling earlobe to earlobe. Ooh, right by the hole. That's disappointing. Just three feet to the cup. This is what they have left for par. Well, that's a phenomenal performance. The lead is now out to 10 shots. Incredible. And this is quite an astonishing performance by our leader. Their advantage now out to double digits. I'm not sure if the chase back is good enough to catch them. Nicely done. Plenty of daunting approach shots on this golf course, Rich, but this one at the last is as tough as it gets. It is, Luke. When the pin is up front, there's just not a lot of room for these players to work with, both left or right. When the pin is in the back part of the green, you do have a little bit more room, but you have to favor long and left. We've seen too many golf balls come up short in the penalty area too many times over the years. That's a good-looking shot there. And with this part, she can win the event. Oh, size them up for the red card again that Arnold Palmer made famous. You are the Arnold Palmer Invitational Champion. Congratulations. And what a week it was. A fantastic victory. Sensational victory on arguably one of the tour's hardest golf courses. Way to go. Great win.
And wow, what a rivalry that was. Let's recap some of the results. Well done, Henny Koyak. Thanks for joining us on course today. Oh, it was a pleasure to be able to follow the action out there today, Luke. Well, that'll just about do it. On behalf of Rich Beam, I'm Luke Elvin. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to your company next time.